You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Welcome to Proof Text. This is an episode devoted to grammar points, and we're going to be talking about the imperfect tense. Michael, mm. uh, what what do you have to say about the imperfect tense? Yeah, imperfect tense is uh, fun. So I'm preaching and teaching through Mark right now. And um, one of the things I often notice is how Mark uses this aorist plus infinitive construction. Um, but sometimes it seems like uh, in place of that, he'll throw like, uh, so for example, he'll, he'll say something like um, didaski Arhin or something like that. He began to teach, right? S- something along those lines. But other times he can just use the imperfect to one word to uh-huh. capture that same thing. So often when I see the imperfect, the first thing that's come into mind for me is like, is this an inceptive perfect? Is it a progressive perfect? Like what, what is going on? So by inceptive, I mean, is he indicating he's beginning to say something? So this, like starting action and pastime, or is it recurring progressive? Like, does it keep doing something? So that's kind of where my mind goes when I start, when I see an imperfect. Yeah. So Michael, so these ideas of like continuing, beginning, starting to do something with the implication that's still going on comes out of the verbal aspect that the imperfect tense has. And that is imperfective aspect. (laughs) So imperfective aspect views the event as internal and and often somehow ongoing. So you're kind of looking at the parade unfolding and it's kind of moving before you. This can be habitual behavior, the start of a behavior that goes on, uh, repeated behavior, and the, these kinds of things. Now, the, uh, the imperfect tense is formed out of the what's called the first principal part which is shared with the present tense. So there are six principal parts. And what that means is that the imperfect tense is gonna be formed off of the same verbal stem as the present tense. And so uh, that can help with your parsing if you can recognize that this stem O is, is related to the lexical form stem, that can help with the parsing. It's formed with an augment that epsilon added to the front. And then you have the verb stem, which again is identical to the present tense verb stem. And then it uses what are called the secondary endings, uh, the active and middle passive endings. On es e, omen et te on are the active. The middle passive endings are omen, u ito, omata, este, onto. And uh, yeah, so these are important um, in my my uh, visual filter on logos. I mark these verbs with a yellow highlight because they're often significant to consider, you know, why is this imperfect tense being used here? Yeah. So I think that's what I have for the imperfect tense. Excellent. All right. We hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills, but not sure where to start? Glow's house can help from illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars. Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.